Welcome to FPS Plays Ocarina of Time 80% Run. This is Matt, and it's only Matt. James and Kyle aren't here right now because I recorded this by myself because I didn't want to do a live commentary and mess up. So, me and James just learned this run this week, and this is only my third complete playthrough of the game in one segment without, you know, messing up and having to restart something. So, I'm pretty much going to try to explain all the glitches to my best ability and show you what the actual run looks like. So, um, this run's called the Ganondor run, or also called the Wrong Warp, and pretty much it allows me to skip 99% of the game. I'm going to go straight from killing Goma and the Deku Tree to Ganon's Castle. So I gotta start out by getting the sword and shield, which I'm about to get the sword now, and uh, I need 40 rupees for the shield. So I can do that now. Um, anytime I run backwards, it's mainly just because running backwards is the fastest way to get around, because as far as I know, it has the same acceleration as a roll, but it's continuous. And another thing, if you see how slow the text went for uh, me getting the Kokiri sword, I'm on an American version. Usually if you see like Cosmo or any professional, well, I don't know if they're professional, anybody that actually knows what they're doing, they're playing the Japanese version, mainly because the text goes by much quicker. Therefore, the run goes by much quicker. But we're mainly just doing this for entertainment purposes. So now I get my sword, and I got 13 rupees. My goal is to have 20 rupees by the time I leave the forest. Which I have my 20 rupees now. And I'm going to be leaving the forest through the gate in the Lost Woods. And that's known as the Forest Escape. Which is also the first trick of the run. As soon as I got up here. Now, last night I did record a different run, but for some reason my recording software decided to take a shit on me and it looked like shit, so re-recording it and it's gonna look better. There are obviously some stuff that goes wrong with it. Like as you saw when I equipped my sword, that white block comes on my inventory for some reason. I think that, that's just the ROM, I'm not really sure why that happens. So here, I set myself up in that corner, and I'm doing this series of jumps to put me in a precise spot so I can jump slash into the edge of the wall there. And if you saw, my head was clipped, and I can dive through it and hit the loading bar. So now I'm in the Zora's River, which usually I'd need a silver scale to get past, I believe, which I would obviously need to beat Deku Tree. So I can get my other 20 rupees riding the Zora River. And after I have my 40 rupees, I have to go to Kakariko Village and collect a bottle. And I'm going to do that by returning the Cocos to the lady. I don't really know her name. The hotel lady from Majora's Mask. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I need some bugs. To literally bug the game so I can do a glitch or I don't really know if it's a glitch a trick called Ocarina items and uh, I'll explain that when it comes to it uh, so right now I'm trying to get to Kakariko village before nighttime was well, as you can see it's coming right now so I'm gonna do the second trick of the run it's called the West and by me jumping at the right time and doing a jump slash I hit that wall then what I do is I hold my analog stick very very slightly over and that's gonna pretty much slide me to Kakariko village before nightfall and now we're at the longest part of the run and my least favorite part of the run is the cuckoos. Cuckoos can make or break a run really 
Like, they can make it fast or they can make it slow. The Kukka's never wanted to... They never want to listen. It's hard to grab them sometimes. They'll run away from you, just like they are to me. It's just, it's a nuisance. Yeah, I'm still bad at backwalking, so... So I'm gonna grab this last cuckoo. 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 Yeah. And I'm going to fly and get that cuckoo right there. But the thing of this one is, you can only throw it so far, and the cuckoos respond to where they are in correlation to you. So if I'm behind it, it's going to try to run forward. If I'm to the right of it, it's going to try to run to the left. And if I didn't throw that far enough and I jumped over it, it would run backwards and cost me 10 or so seconds. It's a small stuff with these cuckoos that really just make the difference. So I got four in there, and now there's three left. I'm going to use this cuckoo to access the other two. This isn't too bad of a cucko run, but it's definitely not my best. There's really no way I could just make cuckoos go faster. You just have to do it, unfortunately. One thing I could do is, if you go here, I accidentally talked to Navi, that's really not going to help out. But you can jump right onto the ladder and pretty much skip the ladder to save you know, five seconds. And if you fall down, you know, it's really not costing you anything to try that either. But I've never gotten it. So I got the last cucko. What I try to do here is try to do, like, herd the two remaining cuckoos closer to the well as possible. But it failed, because cuckoos have a mind of their own. That guy is running towards him, he's gonna steal him. And here's the last Coco, luckily. And again, this is just the longest part of the game. So now she's gonna give me a bottle, which is, if you don't already know, the most broken item in Zelda. If you haven't seen the reverse bottle adventure, <laughs> you have to look that up so you can see how ridiculous the bottle can be. So now I'm going to go over here and pick up that rock over there, which has uh, bugs under it. Now I'm going to get the bugs, and then I'm, I'm just going to uh, save warp to my house. Assuming I can pick up some bugs. Yeah, so with those like, screen glitches, I don't know why the game does that. And when I press start, the little white block comes out. This is really just the ROM. I don't really know why it does that. It's pretty much here. If you just save and then go back to the title screen, it'll take you to the last important spot that you were. In this case, it's uh, my house. So now I have my bugs, and I have 40 rupees, and I have the sword, so I can go ahead and buy the shield so I can get past Mido, the all-powerful. And you gotta pay attention because sometimes if you if you're uh, tapping A, you would talk to the store owner, which just burns time. And you gotta make sure you don't try to buy something else because that also burns time. And another thing is, it sounds straightforward, but you gotta make sure you equip your shield. There's been a few times where I would just buy the shield, talk to Mido, and get stuck talking to him 
for a minute straight. Which is just a pain in the ass, really. Wish you can get past Mido the way you can get past the guard in East Clock Town in Majora's Mask by just running backwards. So now I'm going to kill these Deku Babas and I'm going to get the stick, Deku stick, which is the reason why this run is possible. Pretty much. Now, what else I'm going to do is I'm going to take a full heart of damage. And I'll explain that when it comes up later. Now, this cutscene is pretty much the only cutscene we'll really see. And it's vital to the wrong warp glitch. Because this value and another value of another cutscene or the warp will get added. And for some reason, that equals Ganon's castle after you kill Ganon. So, pretty much for this run to work, this has to be the last cutscene you see. But, I'll go farther into detail when that comes up. This run was such a pain in the ass to learn. Because so when you're actually trying to get good and do like speed runs of it, the smallest things will just make you mad and reset the whole run. I think tonight alone, when I was trying to record this, this is like my fourth run in a row. Because I just mess up small stuff. Like earlier, I broke my stick by accident. I couldn't get another one, so I had to restart the whole thing. So here I'm going to get my Deku Nuts, which are crucial for killing uh, Goma. And if you notice, I took out my Deku stick before I climbed the vines. That's because if you do that, it cancels a c little cutscene with Navi, which would burn some time. That's also the same reason why I backflip onto the treasure chest and just jump onto the vines. Because if you're on the ground, Navi will automatically talk to you. And again, it's just a pain in the ass. These wall shields always are a pain in the ass if they get their target on you. You have to move one step at a time. And here, for me personally, this is my hardest sweet spot in the whole game. I even like try to pause buffer it right here, which I never do. I pretty much have to get my one foot on each panel. Kind of like that. And I also need to equip my Deku Nuts, which I don't know why I didn't do that as soon as I got them. So, I'm going to do this series of jumps, just like the forest escape, and I make it past there, I do a side hop, and I jump slash, and what that does, it gives me the recoil that I skipped the first part of the basement. So now I'm going to do a glitch, or, yeah, a glitch called a uh, flame storage. I need to burn that web, even though that web's technically, technically not there. If I wanted to, I could just jump down that web. But this isn't the only time I'll be here, so I gotta burn the web for future sake. Now what I do is, you can do it one of two ways. You can just jump onto the torch, like I just did, and just slash it. And for some reason, that will automatically have your Deku Stick catch, catch fire. Or you can get your infinite swords glitch and jump onto the torch, and you'll hit it that way. And for some reason, if you hit the torch that high, it will automatically give your Deku Stick fire. And as you noticed, when I jumped down that pit, I purposely did the west and took more damage. So now I only have a half-hearted damage. And that's crucial because I'm going to kill Goma right now. But as you see, what I do right now, when I walked in there, the door is going to close behind me, so I can't escape. So, when I kill Goma, I kill her, and I die at the same time. So I can come back to the room later. Now, if you wonder why I jump slashed with my Deku stick out into the cutscene, that's because 
a Deku Stick has the same damage values as a Master Sword for some reason. And if you see I'm doing uh, Crouch Stabs. Crouch Stabs use the power of the last item used, or last attack used. In this case it was a Jump Slash with a Deku Stick, which is the most powerful. Now what did I do to kill Goma that quick? I Deku Nut, Crouch Stab, Deku Nut, Crouch Stab, Jump Slash. And if I wasn't talking, you would hear uh, when I Jump Slash, Link also screams and kills Goma at the same time. That's how I die and kill Goma at the same exact time. So now I'm back in the Deku tree. I'm gonna do a sweet spot and do a Deku Baba Mega Slide. Just like that. And that's such a pain in the ass. It's you have to time it right. It's not particularly hard, but ugh, it's if you get it wrong, it just fucks you over. Because you lose the angle for the basement skip. And that particular trick, my previous runs, my equipment decided to take a shit on me. You couldn't really see what I was doing at all because it was just too choppy. That's the main reason why I'm redoing this run, just so you can see all the tricks I do. Now what I'm doing now is I'm going to break the warp gate. I drop my bugs because when you pick up bugs and you keep your bottle out like I do, I can do this trick right here where I hop in the air, press my bottle, and a different item, and Link will choose, or I guess choose, to play whatever item you press second as his ocarina. That's called ocarina items. So now here, I ran out of the gate, I'm doing a perfect pause buffer. I had my feet together and my left foot in front of my right, and doing that series of frames, do a right turn and enter the door, I'm now in Ganon's castle. It's amazing. I, I still don't really know how it works. And not only am I in Ganon's castle, but Ganondorf is dead. So that means I don't need light arrows, which you would normally need. Which is another reason why this run is possible. Now that last glitch I did to get here, that's called the wrong warp glitch and there's many different ways to do it uh, personally I think that's one of the easiest ways to do it James does it a different way which we will upload a video of how he does it later he does it the same way Cosmo does it it's a frame perfect trick where you have to have your frames perfect or it won't work as you see I pause buffered to my feet to be in a specific frame first they have to be together in a certain spot and then I hold left and my left foot has to be in front of my right foot for that to work. If not, then your game will trigger the cutscene that should be loaded when you kill Goma, which is you talking to the Deku Tree as he gives you the Kikari emblem, I think it's called. But if you do that wrong and you load that cutscene, that's it. That's the end of the run. You have to try it. You have to start over. Which is, it makes it the most difficult glitch to do, in my opinion. This is pretty much the only one that if you do it wrong, you have to restart. Like if I did the west wrong, technically I could wait till the morning. If I did my basement skip wrong, technically I could either do another glitch to get above or solve the basement. It's the only one that requires you to have perfect accuracy. So I'm pretty much getting escorted by Zelda as a young male. And these little rocks on the ground, if I were to touch one, it would burn my shield and then crash the game. That's happened to me a few times, and if that happens, that's a deal breaker. You have to restart. Now the reason why it does that is because you can only be here as Adult Link, technically. And you can't wear the Deku Shield as Adult Link. So if you burn your shield here, the game doesn't know how to load the text that says you've burned your shield and it's gone. So it just crashes the game because it's trying to use up so much memory. Now what I'm doing here is, you saw I jump slashed, so I'm obviously going to be doing infinite swords glitch with the Deku Stick. And I'm going to kill this, these uh, Stealthos so quick, 
just using this glitch. And he should be dead now. And since I'm such a pimp, Zelda's gonna throw me some money. Thank you, bitch. Now, I'm so mad. Uh, I was recording this about an hour ago. And when I was doing my infinite swords glitch, I actually s accidentally stabbed the Stealthos and didn't press pause or didn't activate Navi. And I broke my stick. And there's no other way to get a stick at this point in the game. So I had to restart the game and then run all the way over just because of that one incident. That's the kind of thing that makes this run hard is if you mess up, the smallest things will ruin you. And again, if I touch any of these little uh, stones on the ground, it will c crash the game. But the falling ones won't crash the game, as you saw. I just got hit by two of them. And that's only because it won't burn my shield, because it hits my head. Got hit in the head with a rock. Now, you could... I don't know if you saw back there, but... It says I have the Master Sword on my B button, so if I slash the B button, I would have the Master Sword. Again, that's only because you can only be in Ganon's castle with the Master Sword as Adult Link. Now, technically, I don't have the Master Sword. But again, it's just the game trying to load what it's supposed to be at this point. And again, you'll see that in a few seconds when the game tries to change my avatar because only Adult Link could access that cutscene. And that'll also be the last fight of the game. Which I'll explain again. Yeah, so far it's only been... No. Almost two minutes. Alright, two minutes. About 22 minutes, and we're about to fight Ganon. It's really just unbelievable how quick this run is. I remember the first time I beat this game, I was eight, and it took like a year because I couldn't read. I could actually read, but I couldn't read. Yeah, it just took so long to beat this game. And now that I think I can beat it, you know, five times in one sitting, no problem. Now if you see here, my avatar is going to be bumped up because the game's trying to adjust. See? That's how t tall Adult Link is supposed to be. And as you'll see, I'm actually hovering in the air because of that reason. Now here starts the uh, Ganon fight, which is... It's weird. Um, just like I said before, the Deku Stick has the same value of damage as the Master Sword. And that's vital for this fight because all the damage tables for all other items in this particular fight have a damage of 1. Include the Big Goron Sword, the Hammer, everything has a value of 1. But the Master Sword. Now since the Deku Stick has the same damage as the Oh, let me just say this. The game is like glitching like that, which is part of the reason why I re recorded. But since this is on a cutscene, and most people have seen this cutscene, I'm gonna let it fly. Because you don't really need to see what Navi is saying. Uh, but that's pretty much what was happening previously when I did my other runs. So, pretty much now, I got the Infinite Swords glitch right off the jump, and I'm just gonna walk into Ganon's tail. And as you saw, Ganon swiped away my Master Sword that I never had in the first place. Which is vital, because right now, during this scene, he's done enough damage, I can go get the Master Sword. But I've never had the Master Sword. But when you pick up the Master Sword here in this particular fight, it automatically equips it. So now my little Master Kokiri Sword there actually has the value of the Master Sword. So I'm going to get the Infinite Swords glitch using the Kokiri sword which is actually the master sword again you can see that the master sword is on the B button 
And that's vital because you need the Master Sword in order to deal the final blow. I think I need like one or two more hits and that's the end of the run. GG, Ganon. This is such a pain in the ass to try to hit his tail. Just, you don't you don't know what the way the camera's gonna go while Z targeted with infinite swords. So that's that. Um So that's pretty much my vague attempt to try to explain the run itself. You know. You mean if you comment any questions I'll answer them. And this isn't all we're gonna do with this run. Since James does his run a little different than I do, me and James are going to do a race to see who can complete the run the quickest. And so, the, yeah, that's something to look forward to. It would be something fun to do. And that's the end of the game. And I'm going to leave you here. See ya.